let's go and welcome back everybody to Doki Doki Exit Music. We finally found Natsuki after like honestly a week of her being missing um, and it turns out that uh, apparently she missed the school festival and hasn't been in contact with us because uh, I don't know she had like important housework to do with her parents and now she can't go to club today because she has to already prepare dinner for her family. So um, that's kind of the excuse she gave us. Things are still kind of weird. Um, Natsuki kind of left school crying. Um, things don't feel that good. Uh, not to mention that, uh, Siori's in the hospital right now because she just tried to, uh, take her own life. So, um, yeah. Today's club is, uh, just me, Monica, and Yuri. And, uh, hopefully we can turn things around because things are getting pretty dark pretty fast. Let's jump into it. As disappointed as I am that I didn't spend more time with her, he is safe. He's alive. Jesus, why is that the first thing that I think of when I see her again? Right? That's my point. This mod is like... <laughs> heavy as hell. How about let's get some lighthearted action going on. Let's maybe say that, uh, you know, Natsuki just, uh, you know, her dad's car broke down so he couldn't drive her to school. And then he was like, you know, Natsuki, today's the day when I teach you how to fix a car because gender equality... And the Nazi's like, Ugh, okay, Dad, fine. And then she, you know, and then, you know, as they're fixing the car, you know, they run over her phone with the car when they're testing it. Uh, damn, damn it, Dad, you baka. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, anyway, I need to calm myself down somehow. Well, at least there's... There you are. Where were you? Oh, um, I was caught off guard from wallowing my own thoughts. Bathroom. Okay, well, I was just about to say that we've ended the club early today. Yuri's already at it home. I'll try and call Natsuki again when, uh, again when later this evening. Again when later this evening. Just in case the others show up tomorrow, I'd like the two of you to write poems if you can. Yeah, so we, we also, like, again, talk to Natsuki privately, so s I guess right now Yuri and Monica still think that Natsuki's missing. I don't really see an argument to not tell Monica right now, but okay. Maybe it could help. Who knows? Yeah, sure. I'll... Yeah. Very reassuring. I grab my bag, wave to Monica, and start my way home. As I finish off the last scraps of my dinner, I feel my phone fuzz from the inside of my pocket. Discarding the dirty plate in the dishwasher first, I pull it out and check the notification. Text from... Siori. Several of them, in fact. Hey. Hey, R. I won't be able to call tonight, because I'm going to go to sleep soon, but I wanted to message you to let you know that I'm doing better. You were right. The people here are taking really good care of me. They've given me some meds. I was really scared at first, but I think they're going to help. I'm sorry for doubting you when you said that it would be the best thing for me. By the way, they said I could come home on Thursday, so that's good. I'll call you tomorrow if I can, after school and club and stuff. Good night, R. Despite this good news, I feel the familiar cramping sting. It's being medicated now? I've heard stories online about taking stuff like that. What if she completely changes? What if it doesn't even work? What if she just attempts again? Am I kidding? I already know the answer. I'll fail her. It's like before. I'll fail her. On this sink and splash some water in my face. I'll fail her. She'll be dead. It'll be my fault. I can't bear the thought of her being alone, treated only on pills and encouraging words. I have a just to run to the hospital and be right next to her, making sure she's safe. I want to make sure she's happy again. Be the Siori I've known for so long. But I can only see her strangled corpse dangling from the ceiling fan. Why is this happening to me? I've never felt this way before. Constantly on edge. Overthinking and overreacting to news and I should be happy about. Deep and terrible worry of whenever I see the slightest bad thought. I can't keep doing this. And trembling, I send a message back to Siori. Glad you're doing better. See you soon. See you soon. I'm not admitting myself first. I drag myself upstairs and collapse on the bed. 
These past couple of days have left me completely drained. I can't bring myself to do much of anything other than worry and sleep. With the heavy toll this day has taken on me, sleeping takes me. Wednesday, 27th, September 2017. God. I'm in over my head here. Given how quickly my classes are moving, missing two days of school has taken a toll on my studies. I have a lot of catching up to do. I hardly focus on what the teacher is saying. It all seems so trivial given what's happened to Siori. Natsuki. Perhaps I'm worrying about nothing. Siori may well be very seriously improving. Maybe Siori, or maybe Natsuki is telling the truth and I'm just being paranoid about her dad and family issues. Regardless, one thing's for certain. I'm slowly becoming a nervous wreck. Fantastic. My already dwindling focus runs out completely. All that's on my mind is a sense of foreboding doom, the anxiety of uncertain future. The lesson from hell mercifully ends. The last bell rings. Just like that, I'm brought back to reality. I hastily chuck my materials into my bag. I'm the first one out of the door. Following a now familiar route to the club, I weave through the crowd of students making their way to the staircase. Like, I must say, like, I'm so thankful that, you know, during, like, my high school and middle school years, I didn't really have anything that was, like, so heavy that would just, like, eat at me and I would only be able to think about that and not, you know, living a, you know, regular high school life in that type of sense. Um, I feel like that's a thing that gets touched upon a lot in, in a lot of different forms of media of, you know, like, yeah, the main character, you know, they can't even relate to people that are, like, in high school with them because it's just, like, you know, their issues are so much, like, you know, bigger in the sense to where, you know, I don't know, it's more adulting, wider. I mean, anyway, it, however you want to describe it, you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and it looks like it's uh, it's going to be like this from here on out as well. I think school is going to really, really, really take a back, um, like, kind of take the back end on this mod. I, I bet, like, literally we're going to go to school, like, two more times ever. Probably going to keep going to club, though. That's kind of our escape, right? Following the now familiar, at least I would hope, but I don't know. Last club meeting, as you just saw, was, like, not really nice. <sighs> Following the now familiar route to the club, I weave through the crowd of students making their way to the staircase. As I come up to the final bend, I hear Monica conversing with someone. Pulling my pace down, I wait just by the corner, not to interrupt. A stroke? That's awful. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were all pretty upset. Our whole family was there. He's doing much better now, though. What? That's... completely different from what she told me yesterday. Between this and her evasive behavior, I have no idea what's going on. Why would she lie to me? Or to Monica? Or both? Is this something I did? Oh, hey, Rar. Uh, Natsuki quickly waves at me and heads inside of the club room, beckoning me to follow. Ah, uh, yeah! Hey, <laughs> happy club times! Yeah! Everything's totally okay! Yo, cr crank this music a little bit, baby. This song's a banger. As I enter, I hear Monica and Yuri already engaging in conversation about something. Sounds like they're talking about a book Yuri's been reading. I move past and head straight to the windowsill, our usual spot. Natsuki yanks open a book. Uh, oh, oh, yanks open the closet door and starts fishing around for parfait girls. Go back. Stroke. Really? sick. She is hiding something. That very much is clear. What? I have to broach the subject with her. Natsuki returns, box in hand, and rifles through it for the first volume. I quickly spot it and pull it from the box. And then slouch down and sit against the wall. Well, looks like we finally got through the first volume. It only took us a week. Yeah. And now only 11 more parts. I can hardly contain my excitement. 
Hey! Natsuki lightly push, punches my arm in retaliation for my remark. And we should have said, only a year more reading until we're finished. I'm so excited. Again, when you, when you put it that way, it just sounds so daunting. I mean, I actually love, you know, media that can take that long in a sense, but at the same time, it's like, wow, oh my god, that is like so much of my time, of my life. Again, one thing that I equated it to that, that just is mind-blowing to me is like, I don't know, you know, I know I have viewers that are, you know, 15 years old. I just finished Danganronpa 2. Danganronpa 2 took me, you know, like nine months to finish. That means from the time I started Danganronpa and ended it, that was like 5% of that person's entire existence on planet Earth. <laughs> Just to play a fucking video game. One part of a video game. There's not gonna rumble one, two, three, Despair Girls. I heard four is coming, apparently. And there's also, like, kind of also other spinoffs, too. Like, what the hell, dude? Like, that's just crazy. So, anyway. I get it, Rar. I understand why you're being a little sarcastic here. Because it is nuts. It is nuts to think about it that way on how long it's gonna take. Oh, come on. I like Parfait Girls, really. I know you do. You wouldn't have bothered sitting next to me and reading through it if you didn't. I think I'd sit through pretty much anything if it was with Natsuki's company. Ooh. Look at her smug little face too. Oh, I love her. Anyway, I lean forward and shift the box towards me. Running my fingers through the volumes, I find the second one and swipe it out. I replace it with the old one. Uh, hey, hey, keep that on order. She scoffs before putting the first volume in order with the others. Sorry. Don't worry about it. it. Just gets confusing otherwise. Good point. I'm sure she'd love to see the state of my DVD collection. Natsuki yanks out the manga from my hands and flips straight to the first page. It's so freaking aggressive, it's kind of hot. She holds it out between us like before. Controlling. Yeah, aggressive works too, I guess, but... We're only a few pages in when my mind starts to wander. Stop putting it off. This is the perfect opportunity to ask her what's going on. Monica and Yuri are busy. They left the club room to go look for a hole puncher. <laughs> what? <laughs> they both left to go find a hole puncher? Alright, dude, sure. That's just, <laughs> just like as we're talking about like such a serious topic, and it's just like, oh, both the, the, the other dokies. The, the classroom's empty because they're both searching for a hole puncher. <laughs> okay. It just seems like such a menial thing, you know? I like it. It's funny. Nearly the end of the club day. You can always come back to the manga. And I really need to know if something's wrong. Tell with it. I'll ask her now. Natsuki. Yeah? I... I overheard you talking to Monica earlier. You mentioned that someone in your family had a stroke. That you couldn't make it to the festival. I... Before you say anything. I don't care about the festival. I'm not mad at you. It's just... It's not what you told me, and... Is something going on? No, I... Got it! Oh, Monica swings open the club room door, waving the hole puncher around like a trophy. Here he follows behind her, carrying a box full of lined paper. She sets it down on one of the desks. Oh my gosh, dude, getting crazy ass hiccups right now and burps. Natsuki sighs before whispering to me. I'm out of here. The fountain. Outside. Ooh, we're gonna get to see our first revised CG from the demo. Oh, I've heard it's so much better. I nod, because I'm not gonna lie, the first one was like honestly kind of scuffed looking. Still, respect, but yeah, anyway. Nasi stands up, stretching for a moment. I follow, stuffing the second volume of Farfay Girls back into the box. Can I bring this outside with me? Maybe? Just in case she wants to read? I can tell she's upset. Maybe having the books there would take some pressure off her. As I heft, the uh, heft up the box, Monica turns her attention to me. Hey, Rar. Hey. Monica ushers me over as Natsuki heads straight out of the club room door. Monica's eyes follow her as her expression changes to a familiar melancholy. Already? We still have five minutes left. Head droops down, now facing towards the floor. Can't tell if it's out of confusion, sadness, or disappointment. Probably all three. None of this has been fair to her, admittedly. I feel terrible for keeping her out of the loop. She's clearly doing a number on her emotions. 
It's for the best. Monica takes two deep, swift breaths, lifts her head back up and shrugs. Well, it's not the end of the world. I just wish she could have stayed longer. I need her to fill out the poem activity. Uh, I need her to fill in on the poem activity. Actually, you two are pretty close, right? Can you let her know that I'm trying to get the club back in the swing of things with poems? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell her. Great, thanks. Also, I know you won't say what happened, but how is Sierra doing? I talked to her last night. She's actually doing much better. That's great to hear. Just remind her how we all care about her. Okay? No worries. I will. She smiles at me. Oh, don't worry. I'll let you go now. Gotta go do the little little thing with your girlfriend, huh? I get I get it, you know? Okay. Okay. I grab the parfait girl box before heading towards the club room door. Gotta hang out with your little boo-boo. <laughs> oh fuck. Monica shouts out after me one more time. Just don't forget about the poems! Yep. Come on, whoa! Okay. See you tomorrow, Rar. Finally, I weave through the hallways, making my way to the double doors leading out in the courtyard. I spot Natsuki straight away, sitting alone on one of the benches in front of the fountain. I head over and take a seat next to her, sitting the manga next down to me. Oh my, oh my gosh! Holy moly, this looks so much different. This looks so much different. It's funny, because like... <laughs> it's like... it. My, my hair has to get a little bit longer, and my bang... So, okay. My, the back of my hair would get have, have to be a little bit longer than it is now, and my bangs would have to be a little bit shorter than they are now. But then, in like six months, my hair would look exactly like the freaking main characters. What the frick? It's, it's actually like such a common hairstyle for like, just, I don't know, kind of like a, a, a boy growing their hair out, I guess. But like, you know, anyway. That's me! That's what I'm saying, it's me! It's literally me! That's... I'm in the game! I, oh, I feel it! Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so... Also, Natsuki looking kind of swole, bro. Natsuki doesn't respond. She just stares ahead blankly. Natsuki? No response. Would you... rather not talk about it? Do we just... Oh, yo, slide a hand right there. I take the second volume of Parfait Girls out of the box, rifling through the pages, try and look for the page we left off on. Hey, uh, what page were we on? I remember something about a cafe scene. Earth that. My dad hits me. Almost every day. As for as long as I can remember. I missed the festival because he had a bad morning and a bottle at me. He stopped me from leaving the house. He made me clean the basement when I cried. I wanted to go. I really did. It's funny, really. I did want to perform my poem after all. Probably would have been fun. But... Yeah. Now you know. Great awkward pause. I... Without even thinking, I pull her close in her warm embrace. She flinches slightly at first, but then reciprocates, gripping me firmly. I feel her jerk back a little. He knows where to hit. His hut doesn't show. Looks hurt a lot. My mind is flooded with a thousand screaming voices. Rage, sadness, shock. She's been abused this whole time. And I've just stood by, not once thinking about it. Her poems, her absence, her self isolation. All of them signs that I've ignored. I feel my chest tighten and my lungs start to burn. The familiar sting of anxiety. Natsuki. You can't stay there. You can't. She looks into my eyes, tears beginning to form. What am I supposed to do, Rar? Besides where I go and when, 
no one would believe me. I have nowhere to go. And even if I did, I... The levy breaks. She pulls herself into me. Tear staining my shirt. Between sobs, she's barely able to choke out a sentence. Rar, I can't live like this anymore. But I don't know what I can do. I... I have an extra room. You'd be safe. This probably won't be a permanent solution, but... It'll get you away for... Long enough for us to do something about... Him. I just need a way out. And you need it now. Natsuki wipes her tears from her eyes and shakes her head. You know I can't do that. I don't want to be a burden to you. Besides, you would never let me go. No matter what. You'll never let me go. Mm, I sense some foreshadowing. I don't like it. I mean, I could get you out of there. Or at least, I could try. Give me, I don't know, a day. I'll come up with something. Some way. There has to be a way. I... I'm serious, Natsuki. He sits silent for a moment. Natsuki pulls away from me, wiping a tear from her cheek and sniffling. I can't get involved, Rar. I shouldn't have even... Please. We'll figure it out. Can't let you stay there, Natsuki. You don't get it. This will only make things worse. Think about it long term, Rar. I don't know if we should do this. Or if it'll even change anything in the first place. I know that you want to help, but... Natsuki, the only thing that you should be concerned about is... Your safety. Because it's not going to get better if... Well... If you stay. We both know what he's doing isn't okay, so I'm trying to put a stop to that now. Please... Work with me here. I already told you that I have a spare room for as long as you need it. We just need to get you out and get some of your stuff as soon as we can. Please. She takes a deep breath. Damn it, Prar. Why do I have to love you so much? Why do you have to be my knight in shining armor? Fuck! I hate you, Baka. Why do you have to make this so hard? I don't know, okay? I just... I don't know. Natsuki stares at the ground silently. I can only assume she's mulling the options over her head. Taking a deep breath, she makes up her mind. As if on command, she rises from the bench. I follow. You're right. I know it's not okay. But you really want me over? Had a doubt. As long as it can make you safe. We just need to figure out how to, well, get you out of there first. Does she even need to go home? I mean, I could walk you to my house now. That'd be- No one work. He's expecting me home. 45 minutes ago. In the pit of my stomach. Tiny knot of a knees. I mean, honestly, just more of the reason to just come with me now, honestly. And what happens if she's late? Hey. I wanted to get hurt. I need my stuff, clothes, medication, you know? It can't be today. Tomorrow, then. You can't waste time. You'll have time to get your stuff packed and ready to go. I'll have time to figure out how the hell we're even gonna... This is so messed up. It hurts going a mile a minute. But I need to keep it together and figure something out now for her. Hearing that one of my friends had to go through, choke up a little. Damn it. Bye. Are you okay? You're getting a little. No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm fine. We just need to figure this out. I think. I think I know what. Falls on a mobile phone startles us both. All dead silent. Holy crap, how long- how loud was that music? I just realized that I cranked the music up a shit ton. 
whatever. We were in the moment, dude. We were sucked in, and now this phone just snapped back to reality. We fall dead silent. Latsky slowly pulls out her phone out of her pocket. Puts a finger in front of her mouth, mimicking a shush. She starts to wander away from the bench to avoid the gushing noise of the fountain. With bated breath, she answers. Seconds go by, followed by minutes. Each one feels like an hour. Each one worse than the last. Several steps behind, I can still make out her father's shouts over the line, expression dropping more and more with each and every word. Natsuki visibly flinches a couple of times, taking the phone away from her ear as she does. Before long, it's over. Natsuki turns to me. Defeated. I... Natsuki sighs. I've gotta go home now. I'll walk you. I... I don't know if that's a good idea. Well, I do need to find out how to get to your house. I don't want to be there for you. Oops. Okay. Alright, and that's where we will end the episode. I think that is a perfect time to end. So, um, thank you guys for watching. Again, um, if you want to see this mod get some more love, more traction, like the video. It's the best way to make this video spread some more and then get, you know, some more love for the mod. And, of course, your boy um, himself as well. And, uh, you know, exit music videos are basically coming out every day, so uh, subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to watch some more. And, um, yeah, that'll be pretty much it. We'll see what happens next episode, but it'll definitely be a, um... It's gonna be a crazy one. I think that's pretty... I mean, every episode has really been crazy, but, uh, I don't think that the next episode is gonna be any different. So, thank you for watching, guys. Much love. Take care, and have a damn good one.